So basically to prevent marriage fraud, uh, Shishi Foundation kind of came up with that measure of conditional permanent residence uh, to ensure that uh, couples are actually in love, they're actually living together, to ensure that uh, if a person decides to disappear after days of being granted permanent resident status, uh, that person can face criminal charges, can be deported, and uh, so uh, I don't have children with my wife. Uh, we are a lesbian couple, and uh, we are married for uh, almost a year, so less than the two years uh, uh, situation, the two years uh, requirements. So, uh, if the application is approved in principle, and if the application is approved itself, I, uh, I receive conditional permanent residence, which for me it's not a problem, because like I said, I already live with my wife, so it's not gonna, it's gonna change uh, on that. If that requirement that oh, you need to live with your wife for two years, at least two years after you've been granted permanent residence status, to prove that you're not, uh, you're not not gonna disappear. You're not. You're not here for um, for uh, just for mutilation. Uh, that's not gonna be a problem because we have already and before sending the application, we have already more than one year of cohabitation together. So <laughs> one year of cohabitation. So yes, can you live together? Fine. <laughs> but yes. Uh, one thing that I like to say is that if the spouse lives in an abusive or violent environment, uh, the person can be the the present person can be uh, exempt of those two year requirements. But of course, has to prove uh, with very clear evidence that of that violent and uh, abuse uh, existing in the first place. So anyway, so on the duration of expecting employment, like I said here, I put the date uh, of the, the initial assessment and, uh, that I expect to receive the, the initial assessment from this application. And uh, uh, two years from that date, so uh, because usually in, I expect that an employer, uh, an employment here you, you, employment contract here is usually valid for the first two years, the uh, first in employment contract, so so I put two years. Anyway, um, also they ask about education, education details, um, field and level study, school facility name, country, city, town, uh, the dates you started and completed uh, your education levels, also employment employment uh, information about current occupation uh, company employer facility name city town province and the dates you start and or ended uh, start and ended work as well as previous ones uh, and this this employment information here uh, states give details of your employment for the past 10 years including if you have held any government positions such as civil, uh, civil servant judge, police officer, mayor, member of parliament, hospital administrator. So uh, my employment for the past 10 years was more than what could be filled in this space that is given. So like I did before with other forms, uh, when that situation happens, I wrote, I wrote here a cover letter that I, a letter that I put on the um, at the, on the back of this uh, form. But I put employment information details and I explained that on this page three is required to put all uh, the the locations I worked for the past ten years, and I explained why I work in several locations for the past ten years because I was a Portuguese sign language interpreter in Portugal and in Portugal uh, each school uh, we had a one-year contract on a school so each year we had to apply 
for uh, for several schools, and we could be placed in any school in Portugal. Uh, so I worked in several schools for the years I worked there before I came to Canada. I worked in several schools in several uh, regions of the country. So I explained here that. Uh, that uh, situation and explain why I work in so many places. And of course, I explain all the, the information details from this time to that time and where I worked and what I did. Uh, also, they ask uh, yes or no questions on the back and they give uh, space to write if, um, if any of those questions has a uh, yes. I also there give space to read an explanation. Um, all my answers here was uh, sorry, all my answers here were no. So uh, by filling this on the computer, when I click on uh, no, they they automatically uh, blocked the the spaces here. To, um, to sp and, and like other forms. Uh, this form at a validate button so um, when everything is correctly filled without any space any spaces leaving in, any questions leaving in blank um, appears this barcodes printed at the back, appears on the back of the at the end of the form and when printed also send it so. So they also ask for this open work permit application uh, for the copy of the marriage certificate. There it is, and also for the copies of uh, passport pages. The desk, the photocopy of my passport, as well as the stamps. Uh, or my passport of uh, the rest this one is the most res recent entry in Canada and also uh, other visits to Canada that I have here as well and also a photocopy of my current immigration status which is uh, my work permit and that's it so I so our forms uh, for really lots of forms uh, very intense very thorough application and that's why it took us months to fill out all these forms to gather all these applications to um, uh, ask for the reference letters to family and friends and we're gonna send it tomorrow. To today is August twelfth, two thousand thirteen. Uh, it's the night, so we're gonna send it in the morning. And uh, I hope this is a complete application package um, to avoid delays, to avoid problems, and wish me luck. And I hope that these videos were useful to any of you that that might see this and my past this similar situation as we are passing right now and hope that my me explaining the forms and uh, giving you ideas of what can be considered uh, documents and evidence for a good faith marriage uh, hope that might help you in your application and save you time and good luck to your application if you're uh, you're doing one. I'd like to remember that this was an in Canada application. This was a family sponsorship application, a uh, sponsor spouse uh, application. When the the person being sponsored, the spouse is in Canada, like my situation is. Uh, Several people uh, apply from outside Canada. It's another option. But like I said at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the first video, the processing times are different. The forms are different. The the place you need to send the forms are different. The 
depending of the type of application in Canada or inside or in Canada or outside Canada. So um, this was an in Canada application of that help and uh, wish me luck. <laughs>